We're going to demonstrate how to perform anterior projections using our XCP instruments and our PSP plates. Um, please know that your protocol for taking your anterior projections is the same no matter what modality you're using, whether you're using the PSP plates or whether you're using the corded sensors. You're going to start by setting up your XCP instrument. You have three parts to your instrument. You have your ring, your arm, and your bite block. What you'll start doing is take your bite block and place it on the prongs that are your blue and your yellow. And you will place it in the bite block as far out or away from the front as you can. And then the next thing you'll do is put your ring on. When the ring is on correct, and I'm gonna do not correct first, you should be able to look through the ring and see the entire bite block. So as you can see, that would not be correct. So what you want to do is change your ring until you can see the entire bite block through the ring. And that will allow you to um, get a correct projection without a cone cut. Once you have your XCP put together correctly, you're going to choose your PSP plate that you're gonna use. We're gonna demonstrate your maxillary central projection first. But if we look at our anterior projections that we do, there are six. The um, maxillary central is the only one that we use a size two sensor for, and all the others are a size one sensor. Looking at our anteriors, these are our central maxillary and mandibular projections, and these are our lateral canine projections. These being our maxillary, these being our mandibular. We highly suggest using your sequence um, sheet that is here to help keep you organized so you'll know what projections you've taken and which ones you still need to take. So we're gonna start with our um, central projection for demonstration purposes. And what you're gonna do is place the PSP plate in the bite block with the black facing the ring. There's a slot there and you're gonna slide it in. I always look at the back to make sure it's sitting evenly in the bite block. So you do not want it like this. You want it right in the center. All right, now we're going to um, demonstrate how to place the um, bite block in the mouth. And what you, would like, what you need to do is hold the bite block with your hands, get it inside the mouth against the palate. And if you look at the bite block, there is a line right in the center of the bite block that divides the bite block. So you will use that line as a guide to place your anterior projections. That line should go in between the teeth that you want to appear on your sensor. So for the maxillary central incisor, that line will be placed between numbers eight and nine or your maxillary central incisors. So let's do that now. So when we're placing the sensor in the mouth, we always, no matter what projection you're taking, want your bite block to touch the teeth that you're taking. And what I mean by that, if I'm taking teeth numbers eight and nine, I'm not gonna have my bite block sitting down here on the bottom. This is a very common mistake that students make. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the bite block and we're gonna put it up against the teeth that we're taking. And if you look, there's your line that separates the um, bite block into two halves. And that line should be right in between numbers eight and nine. And that allows you to have half of the sensor on each side, therefore, you will have both of those teeth evenly on your bite block. You also, if you notice, you want to have your patient bite as far out to the end of the bite block as they can. This allows your teeth and your sensor to be parallel to each other and that is what we want 
when we're using the paralleling technique. The next thing that you're gonna do is take your ring and slide your ring closer to the patient's face. The last step is to bring our x-ray tube head up and line it up for the projection. Okay, if you look at the arm of the XCP instrument, the arm of the instrument should be parallel with the line on the tube head, and you can see here that it is not. So this sets your vertical angulation whenever you get your arm parallel with the line on the cone. And you can use the line down here, you can use the line up there, but you wanna to stand to the side and get those parallel. You can even bump it a little bit just to get it even. Once that is done, you can take your hand and slide it right behind the ring. It, this keeps you from bumping your patient. And then you're gonna change our horizontal, which is our back and forth with our tube head. So basically, you bring this up and you want it flush with the ring on all sides. Okay, and as you can see, our vertical has not changed, but now we're flush on all sides. And then you make your exposure. The next projection that we'll take is the lat maxillary lateral canine, which is a size one sensor. Again, you're gonna place your sensor in the bite block with the black facing the ring. For placement of a lateral canine shot, what you want to do is bring your bite block in as if you're taking a central again, but then you're going to swing it over to your lateral canine, and if you can see the line right there on your bite block, it's in between your lateral and your canine, and then you have your patient bite down. And again, you want to have your patient biting as far out on the bite block as they can. The next thing that you'll do, again, is line up your um, tube head, and again, you'll use your arm and get your line on your tube head and the arm of the XCP parallel to each other, and then you can just slide it right up and get it flush left to right and then you can take your exposure. One thing to notice about your maxillary projections, and we'll show you a mandibular projection in a moment, is your tube head is pointing down um, for your maxillary projections. And you'll see in a moment that your mandibular projection, your angulation is more pointing up. And um, let's go down to our mandibular projections now. For the mandibular arch, you will use a size one TSP plate for your mandibular projections. If you're using our corded sensors, it is one size for all of the projections that you take. But again, the technique is the same. So what you'll do for mandibular is you'll just turn your XCP where the, um, the PSP plate's on the bottom, not on the top like maxillary and you're going to place your bite block on the teeth you're taking just like you did on the maxillary with the line in the middle of the bite block between the two teeth that you want on your projection which in this case we're going to do our mandibular centrals and then you're going to have your patient bite down enough to hold your bite block in place And as you can see, your XCP instrument is kind of sagging down just a little bit compared to the maxillary. Now, as we said before, we will see that our tube head is
is actually pointing up compared to the maxillary that was pointing down. So again, you'll make sure that your arm and your line on your PID are parallel and then you just pull it right up and keep it um, flush left to right. And again, you change that by moving your tube head left to right. So once you have your vertical set, you should not have to touch that again. It's all about getting the horizontal, which is your left to right motion, flush with your ring. All right, when we're doing our um, lateral canine shots on the mandibular, just like the maxillary, we would take it in as if we were doing a central, and then we just rotate it around to your lateral canine um, space with your line right in between those two teeth. Have your patient bite down and line it up as normal. So just a refresher, you will take three anterior projections on the top, two lateral canines and a central, and the same on the bottom. Always make sure your bite block is touching the teeth that you're taking, and also make sure that the teeth that you're taking are centered on your sensor by using the line on the bite block as a guide. We're going to be demonstrating how to perform bite wing radiographs on a patient. You will see, typically you take four bite wings on an adult patient using size two sensors, and you can see where they are um, laid out on your sequence chart. You'll have your ring, your arm, and also your bite block. In the kits that you have, you have two different bite blocks. As you can see, one is sitting up vertically and one is sitting horizontally. When you are taking horizontal bite wings, which is um, pretty much standard unless your patient has um, periodontal uh, problems or you're looking to see if they do, you would use the one that's sitting up vertically for your horizontal bite wing and you would use the one that's sitting horizontally for your vertical bite wing. You can see the difference in the two. So when you're using your sensor, you can see how it would fit here for your vertical and here for your horizontal. But today we're gonna to be doing horizontal bite wings. And again, you use size two PSP plates for your um, bite wings. So what you're gonna do is take your arm and you're gonna go ahead and attach your bite block to the arm. The next thing that you're gonna do is take your ring and you're gonna place your ring on the arm and as you can see you can see the entire bite area through your ring and if you do then you have it correct the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to place our PSP plate in our bite block and what you want to do is make sure the black is always toward the ring you're gonna slide it into the bottom and then you're just gonna flex it just a little bit to get it in your bite block. You do not wanna take it, try to slide it in the slots because a lot of times it will rip your barrier and the, and the PSP plate will become contaminated. So again, you want to just flex your PSP plate. Then the other thing you want to note is that the plate is in the center. So how you know that you have your um, bite wing XCP put together correctly is when you look through the circle, you can see the entire PSP plate. You can also see the black side of the, um, the barrier. Also, it's counterintuitive, but you can see the plastic as well. You will be shooting your X-ray beam through the plastic, but it does not show up on your holder. So make sure when you're looking through that you can actually see your bite block through there as well as your entire packet. So when we're placing our, um, our PSP plate for a bite wing projection, it is a premolar that we're gonna be demonstrating. So of course we want our two premolars on the projection. You also, the criteria says that you need half of your canine on your premolar projection. And the reason why that is, is if you think about it, if you have half of your canine, you're gonna automatically have your whole first premolar. 
So when we place this in the mouth, the PSP plate, what we're gonna be looking for is that the front of our PSP plate comes up and touches the space between your mandibular centrals. That way you're gonna be guaranteed to get your um, distal of your canine on there and your two premolars. So let's see what that looks like. Whenever you take your bite wing and put it in the mouth, it's best to kind of lay it flat, kind of like a Frisbee, put it in the mouth, and you want your PSP plate to lay between your tongue and your teeth. So you are not sitting it on top of the tongue. Be really uh, mindful of that. So you place your bite block on the mandibular teeth and you look at the front of your plate to make sure it's between the centrals and it's pulled up to that point. And you can look from the front whenever you're a student to make sure that that is in place. Hold it down to keep it steady where you want it and have your patient close. Your bite wing projection shows half of your top teeth, half of your bottom teeth, just the crowns. So that's the reason why your bite block holds your PSP plate the way it does compared to your anterior projections or your posterior projections. You're gonna slide your ring forward and then you're gonna get your tube head. And just like with your other projections, you are going to get your arm parallel to the line on your cone. And then you're going to take your tube head, again, you can slide your hand in here, and you're gonna get it flush from side to side. And then you'll go out and you'll make your projection. In your premolar projection, you will do your molar projection. The criteria for your molar projection is to get the distal half of your second premolar. So what you'll do again, take it in like a Frisbee, and this is gonna go back further. I always tell students to get your bite block inside of the cheek, because if you're out here, you're not gonna be able to get it in far enough, okay? So you're gonna be here, squat down, look through your circle, and bring the bite, the um, PSP, the front of the PSP, up to half of your second premolar. All right, the last thing you're gonna do is you're gonna angle the PSP plate toward that same spot between the mandibular centrals, but you're not gonna pull it forward. You're just gonna angle it that same direction, and then you're gonna have your patient bite down. And you'll line up your tube head the exact same way with your arm parallel to the line on the tube head, and it's flushed uh, flush left to right for your horizontal. And then what you'll do is you'll do your premolar and bite, um, molar bite wing on the opposite side. And basically what you'll do is just take this, flip it over, so you um, can use the same exact setup and you'll do your premolar and molar on the opposite side. When you're using your corded sensor, there is one thing that's a tad bit different with your placement. As you know, we've talked about how you want to bring the front of your sensor up between the mandibular centrals whenever you're using your PSP plate. When you're using the DEXAS corded sensor, they're a little bit smaller. So what you have to do is angle it over to the canine on the opposite side in order to get your canine on this side. So if this were a, a corded sensor, your, it would look more like this. It would be angled further in the floor of the mouth compared to the PSP, which is pulled up right between the two front teeth. Now we're gonna demonstrate how to take um, horizontal bite wings using the tabs. So what you're gonna do is pull the tab off. You're gonna fold it in the center and then almost make like a little wing or like a little airplane. And what you'll do is take your PSP plate and you'll take your tab and put it right in the center. Make sure that you're not looking at this as part of your PSP plate. So you wanna place it right in the center of your PSP plate. The other thing that you can do for your premolar, since we're gonna be angling this in the mouth, is you can take another one and put it here 
it makes like an extension so you can have something more to hold on to. Um, and I'm gonna slide that off just a little bit further so we can have a little bit more of an extension. So you can just kind of put it on the edge like this. And that gives you a little more to hang on to while your patient's biting. All right, so you can go ahead and set your vertical on your um, tube head. For your bite wings, it's gonna be between 10 and 15 degrees. And on this unit, you can see um, you have a positive 15, which means that your, your tube head is pointing down. And you can see there's a little, little dot there that tells you where it's set. So 10 to 15 degrees, and all of your um, x-ray tube heads have a gauge on them, just depending on the manufacturer, um, will depend on how it looks. You can go ahead and set your vertical. Now, when you're placing your, um, your plate in the mouth, everything is still the same as what we talked about as far as placement with the, um, using the XCP. So I'm gonna slide it into the patient's mouth. I'm gonna make sure that the um, tab is down on the lower teeth. I'm gonna make sure that the front of the PSP plate is right between the centrals, and then I'm gonna have my patient bite down. And you can see how I can hang on to this tab so my patient's not gonna bite me. All right, now our vertical is already set. So we have our packet placement, we have our vertical. So the next thing we need to do is to set our horizontal. The criteria for your premolar shots is your space between your premolars should be open. So how you do that is if you look at the top of your tube heads, there's a red dot. And this is um, a depiction of where the central ray is. And when the central ray is pointed between the two teeth that you want open, it keeps you from um, getting horizontal overlap. So what you'll do is stand behind your tube head, look straight down as if you're the central ray, and you want to point the central ray right between the two teeth that you want to open. And you're looking at the maxillary, not the mandibular. So if you think about the steps that we've done so far, you, pack it, you did your packet placement, you did your vertical, which is setting your dial. I just did horizontal, where my central ray is pointing between the two teeth I want to open. And the last step is centering. So we know for bite wing that we have part of our PSP plate up here, the maxillary, and part on the mandibular. And we know our tab is in the center of our PSP plate. So what we need to do is to come from the front and just take our PID, pull it up to where that tab is in the center of our circle here. So um, I'm gonna come around to the front and I'm just gonna pull this up. I'm gonna get it closer to my patient and pull it up to where if you look from this direction, you can see the tab is in the center of the, the tube head circle. So that's your premolar. Now, for your molar bite wing, everything is the same as you did with the XCP, but I did want to show you one little trick that is very helpful for your molar bite wing. Of course, your cheek is in the way, so you can't really see very well. So what you can do is take your sticky tab and pull it to the end of your PSP plate. That way you know that when you're looking at this part of the PSP plate to line it up, you're at the very, very end. Also, you can see your tab better for your centering. So let's look at the placement in the mouth for the PSP plate with the tabs for bite wings. Again, just like with the XCPs, you want to have half of the premolar, the second premolar on your molar bite wings. Again, you're gonna take it, place it in the patient's mouth, the tab down on the teeth. And I can look at my tab and see where it is as far as that second premolar is right at half. So what I'll do is I'll have my patient bite down in just a moment. But the other thing that we wanna to do to make sure that our packet placement is correct is we want to angle this packet toward the centrals, the space between the centrals, and then we'll have our patient bite down. And you'll do the same steps we did before. You'll have your vertical set at 10 to 15 degrees positive, which is pointing down. You'll do your um, horizontal, and you'll also do your centering. And then you'll do two on the opposite side.
Now we're going to demonstrate how to take um, posterior periapicals. Um, you can see from the layout where our um, PSP plates should be positioned. All of these are size 2 sensors. You will be taking premolars and molars on the maxillary right and left and mandibular right and left. So what we're going to do now is demonstrate how to set up your XCP instrument. What you'll have is your posterior bite block, which is the yellow bite block, and then you have your ring, I mean your um, arm, and you can see you have your yellow prong here that your bite block fits in, and then you have your yellow slot for your um, posterior. We'll start with the maxillary, patient's maxillary right, um, and we'll go over to the patient in a second and show you how um, you know how to do your arm. But basically, you're gonna again place your bite block on your arm as far back as you can, and then you're gonna take your ring and you're gonna place your ring on and to the point where you can see the whole bite block through the ring. All right, the first one that we are going to demonstrate will be your maxillary premolar. So we're gonna take our PSP plate, and on the posteriors, the PSP plate goes horizontally. Remember on our anteriors, your PSP plate sits up vertically. So let's go over to our patient now. For our XCPs, when it's set up the correct way for a projection, this slot here is where your cheek fits. You can see how if it's incorrect, your, there's no spot for your cheek. Also, the other way you know it's correct is the red prongs are out toward the nose. See the red prongs are out toward the nose and you have the slot where the cheek can fit. Now, for our premolar projection, Again, just like with our bite wings, we want the distal of our canine, therefore the front of our PSP plate should sit behind your central incisors right in the center. So you're going to take your, your uh, bite block, place it on the teeth that you're taking, look from the front to make sure that your PSP plate is sitting right between your central incisors on the maxillary. And again, your bite block is touching the teeth that you're taking, and then you want to have your patient bite down enough to hold it in place. And you can slide your ring in. All right. Now, the next thing that you're gonna do, just like we've done before, is you're gonna take your tube head, your line on the side should be parallel with your arm, so that's the first thing that you're going to get. Your vertical is taken care of. So all you need to do is now get it flush left to right. And then you're ready to make your projection. After we've taken our premolar projection, we'll get another PSP plate and we'll do our molar projection. So we'll put a different PSP plate in and we're gonna go for our molar projection. Just like with our bite wings, we want the distal half of the second premolar. So I'm gonna pull my patient's cheek back, I'm gonna identify where the second premolar is, and I'm gonna look at the front of my packet to make sure that it's halfway that premolar. Again, your bite block is on the teeth that you're taking, your sensor is angled toward the central incisors and you'll have your patient bite down. And you'll line up your um, tube head just like we've discussed before. Now, if you can think about your posterior periapicals as an X, okay? The setup of your XCP that you use for your maxillary patient's right is the same one that we use on the patient's mandibular left. And how we can tell that that's correct is we have our space for our cheek and the prongs, the red prongs are pointing out toward the nose. All right, 
So let's see what this setup looks like. So we'll come to the other side, same principles as your bite wings. The front will come between your mandibular incisors. So we're gonna take it in, get it inside the patient's cheek, place it on the lower teeth, because now we're taking the lower, and this is gonna be angled to where the front of your PSP plate is between your central incisors, and then you, you're gonna have your patient bite down. And then you'll line up your tube head like we've discussed. You'll get your next PSP plate, and you'll do your molar projection, so you're gonna identify where your second premolar is, you're gonna take the front of that packet and put it halfway, that second premolar, have your bite block sitting on the lower teeth and have your patient bite. Prior to having them bite, you wanna make sure that your, your um, PSP plate is angled toward the anterior teeth, those central incisors. And then you have them bite down, line up your um, tube head. Now, we've done the upper right and the lower left, now we have to do the opposite. I wanna show you how this would actually be set up incorrect for when we come up here to the patient's upper left. So if you look, I know this is not correct for there because the red prongs are not pointing toward the nose, they're pointing toward the ear. And also there's no slot for our cheek, all right? So when we come up here, we need to change our XCP. So what we're gonna do is take our arm and our ring off we're gonna put our arm on the opposite side. All right, because look, that gives us room for our cheek and it also has our red prongs pointing toward the nose. And then we can just put our ring on. And if you look, that would be incorrect because you cannot see your full PSP plate. And there's also another error here Look, I have it in the red slot, not the yellow slot. So let's see if we can fix this. We're gonna take it and put it in our yellow slot. And now if you look through, you can see that your whole PSP plate is seen in the ring. And also just to double check, you can see there's room for the cheek. And also the red prongs are toward the nose. So this would be your setup for your maxillary patient's left, premolar and molar. And if you watch, ta-da, on the left, the patient's right mandibular would be for premolar and molar. So again, the setup, if you think of an X, the same one that you use here is the same one that you use 